Great afternoon. Great afternoon. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. <laughs> we want to thank God for this uh, prompting all the time to get into the Word. And this morning, I did a video. I wasn't feeling that well, but uh, basically, hopefully, you got the information. You know, um, a lot of times, we are very conscious of our appearance. You like they say, dressing for success. <laughs> but this is not a... a, a this is not kind. This is a regular little show, y'all. This is just a regular little mama in between everything else, okay? So hopefully I didn't offend anybody with my little issues this morning. But I'm I'm serious about the Word of God, and I pray that you're serious about the Word of God and studying. And I was talking to uh, someone after the morning video, and my mind went to the Lord, and the reason he didn't come to earth with his crown and his, you know, royalty because he would have left out a lot of people. Because <laughs> a lot of people, uh, you know, are very Im impressed with outward stuff. But um, I pray that you are on this YouTube channel as a regular person. I try not to come in my uh, house coat and stuff like that. But um, I pray that you're still getting blessed by this uh, brief time of study. And this morning we were talking about Israel, pray for Israel. And we were in the book of Zechariah. And I want to go back to the book of Zechariah and also cover, because I believe that this is a time, in fact, maybe I should start in Psalms 102, because I believe this is a time that God has chosen to favor Israel. The time is going to come, according to the scripture, is the time is coming to favor her, okay? Which we see, the scripture says, in the last days, he will bring her back from the four corners of the earth, and from Genesis all the way through, we see that God has chosen Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob is Israel. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. He wrestled with God, and God changed his name. Okay, And from him came the 12 tribes, and then uh, he rented from Solomon because of you know his, his uh, sins with all the various women. And God divided the 12 tribes up into two southern tribes and 10 northern tribes where you got Judah and Ephraim, which is scriptures is talking about that. And the reason that it, they are important is because the scripture reveals to us that God did not choose them, but God chose that particular line of lineage to send his word. He'd already spoken the word in Genesis and said that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent and the serpent uh, seed will bruise her heel. So God spoke that way. He, and the scripture reminds us that Christ was slain from the foundation. So God had a plan from the beginning and he had to have somewhere to, you know, to, and in fact, a couple of times through Judah and Ephraim, he said, I had to leave me somebody <laughs> because he, they all was in such a terrible state. But he, he said, for my name's sake, for my name's sake, I kept the line going, okay? And until the time and to the fullness of time when Christ came. And I thought about Christ coming such a lowly position because of how he had come with royalty and royal, you know, all the things that royalty people wear, you know, all the jewels and all the stuff that people are very impressed with, you know, then he would have got a lot of attention or people... Uh, he might have left out a lot of people because a lot of people realize they can't even approach certain people because of their high status. But he came lowly, very, very, very lowly. And so we don't want to get all crushed. In fact, he said, don't know any man after the flesh, you know. But it, this world seems to try to push you to try to say, you know, you got to be, you know, got to get put, put on your face first. <laughs> You can't just come just as you are. You got to put on your face. <laughs> you got to put on what I call a, a mask. You know, if they should sing so smiling faces, tell lies. <laughs> Can you dig it? <laughs> That's back the time when I was partying. Okay, but we are in a whole different pathway now, y'all. I hope you know that. Okay, that's why it says somebody coming to church and they're all raggedy and ugly looking and, and, you know, messed up. People say, oh, put them people in the back. And if they come all dressed up and fancy, oh, bring them down front. We got to get out of that. Thank you, Jesus. We got to get out of that. We have to get out of that attitude about trying to put on these faces and these masks just to try to tell. 
you know, I'm over here going, you know, I'm ranting again. Okay. But let's go back to the scripture. I want to talk a little bit about Israel because I believe according to the scripture, it's coming time for God to favor Israel. And a lot of people have an attitude about Israel. They really have a serious attitude. They have an attitude uh, uh, um, and which is not a good. Uh, we're going to read Psalms 2, and then we're going to go back up to Zechariah. Because as the believers in Christ, like some people talk about, we don't like blacks, we don't like Jews. I said, well, wasn't Jesus a Jew? I mean, wasn't he Jewish? Wasn't he Jewish? So this is superficial stuff. We got to get out of that. I don't care what race we are. We have to stop judging by clothes and diamonds and brevity and press. Oh, they got this. We better stop that because when you leave this earth and you leave this tabernacle and you're not clothed and robed in righteousness and love and you got issues and all, and all this stuff, you will be in big trouble. And I'm trying not to do that, okay? Uh, yeah, I could dress up, but it's not all about that, okay? It's not all about, it's about getting robed in righteousness and robed in Christ. He done showed us so many times when he came, how he eating and drinking with the publicans and, and how he, you don't have a pl no place to lay his head. And when are we going to be transformed? First of all, our minds and our attitudes. We got to change that, okay? And I believe right now, because what's happening throughout the world, and the scriptures are coming to, to uh, right now, Israel has been attacked. And only God knows what he's going to prompt her to do. But the scripture clearly say the time is going to come, two nations will be on her side. And then whatever she's going to do, they're all going to turn against her. And then Jesus is going to show up for sure. Okay? Because God is dealing with the, Israel is being attacked for one reason. Because she is giving glory to the creator, the true God. That's who she's representing. That's why. You know, and he asked that she sinned. And all through the Old Testament, she went into idolatry and she went into this. But God began to watch through that line through 40 and two generations. Now, if you can check your family back to five generations, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff in there. Okay. Okay. But God been watching through. Genesis all the way down to the time of his son who came through 42 generations. And this morning I talk about the burdensome stone and the, the talk about the, the, uh, the land and the Palestine and who owns it. And, and cause a lot of people can't go back no more than five or six or seven or 10 generations. <laughs> then they go say, well, go back 10 generations. Who owned this 10 generations? Okay. They go way back. You keep going back and going back and you'll see, that God, from the beginning, he said clearly the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. And God said the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. The earth is his and he can give it to whoever he want to give it to. So that means we all on this earth, regardless of nation, creed, you know, whoever, whoever we are, we had to talk to the one and only true and living God. Of course, now they're trying to open up portals and, and get to, uh, you know, to uh, uh, aliens, and they're trying to do a whole lot of stuff, okay? But I'm sticking with the scriptures. <laughs> I'm sticking with the scriptures because I've seen the power of God work in my life. And because and we're still going through, and, and the reason that I don't get disturbed by things that happen is because when I thought to leave this earth, God intervened because there is a life after this life. There are worlds to come. There are life after this life. There is, there, there is an existence after we leave these bodies. So we off into another thing. So now we're going to read them because we basically want to focus on Israel and any kind of attitude about they deserve it and, and, and they're not the only one suffering and they're not the only one. All these comments, okay, it's not necessary. It's really not necessary. And what we have to do is follow what God is saying. If you believe in this Bible, six, six books, if you believe in this Bible and you believe that God inspired these 40 authors to write this book. Now, a lot of people say, well, how do you know? Well, the scripture tells me that you won't know if God himself don't open your eyes. So you don't have to debate that. If you belong to God, then his sheep going to hear his voice. I used to be trying to figure out how to convince people. <laughs> 
but that ain't my job to convince you because I can't get into your heart and I can't get into your soul. I can only speak into your ear. And then the Bible said, God, children will hear and their soul shall live. Okay, so he's the one that brings life to us even when we are in sin, dead in sin, and in trespasses, God is the only one that can bring us into life. And so we're going to continue on with the word. Thank you for your patience with me. I'm still going through, but I just want you to know, I don't feel tired. I don't want to get all fancy, okay? And I haven't been getting fancy on this thing. It's just regular in the dining room, in the kitchen, uh, in the TV room, whatever, just sitting down talking about the word. And it's most important, it's not me. It's it's the, it's the word, okay? Please stay focused on the word. Write the, I try to give you the scriptures, and I try to encourage you. It's just to, uh, to this is uh, saying iron sharpening iron. It's just to try to get you going, get, get, let you understand it's imperative. It's, it's a must that you get the word and that the word get inside of you. Okay, because if you don't have the word in you, it, he is an anchor to your soul. It's it's a cleansing. It's a deliverance. It's everything we need. We are changed and transformed by our minds being renewed. <laughs> we got to have our minds renewed. Okay, and put on Christ and, and put on Christ by putting on the word. Okay, so we're going to um, Psalms um, 102. And then we're going to go to Zechariah. And we're going to go to Isaiah. And Zechariah, the 10th chapter, I want to deal with because um, I really believe what's happening now that God is beginning to favor Israel. He's going. When the people think they come up against, which they refer to the Six-Day War, when Israel start, became a nation again, and how uh, some of people even recorded, they thought angels was there fighting with them. I believe, according to the scripture here, God going to send some angels, and he gonna show, God going to show up in the fight. Like he did with David. David said, listen, you coming up against me with sword and shield, but I come up to you in the name of the Lord. And today, God going to deliver you into my hand. And the Philistine was like, y'all send this boy out here. You know, this is just a boy. You think, you know, like, you look like I'm a dog. But didn't God deliver? As David said, God going to deliver you. And all through the, uh, Elijah and Elisha, it said, open the eyes to see. Because there's, a, there's angels. Israel is going to have assistance from angels in these battles. Hope y'all know that. It's not going to be just flesh and blood. Thank you, Jesus. It's not going to, and even if they try to summon up, and, and, and years ago when Rome and all that, they would just go and read the liver and, 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 and try to get these witchcraft and try to get all these things to try to help them. But they can't come up against the power of God, which you saw that through uh, in Egypt. You know, Moses stole through the snake. Uh, the stick down, it turned to a snake, and so Pharaoh said, eh, it ain't nothing. He said, call them magicians, and call them people, and they threw it down a snake too, and then look and say, oh, goodness, Moses' stick just ate up our stick. Because <laughs> whatever power the enemy brings, God is greater. Okay, that's what he told me this morning. So let's pray, and we go into the word. And the main thing is that you do not get caught up in anti-Semitic attitudes, because the scripture is clear. God is working. In the lives of Israel, Israel, okay, those are the people he's working in them. Thank you, Jesus. We read about Paul the other day. He said, "Only blinded them for a time to bring in the Gentiles." This is the plan of God, and the salvation is coming through. As Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Matthew give the genealogy of Christ. Okay, God told you in the scripture when He talked about those dry bones, Ezekiel. Prophesy to these dry bones. I actually one of the time when I see the Holocaust and they how they burning up them little babies. I said, I know God gonna raise them people because the only reason they're being killed is because they're identifying with God. You know you got to bring them up, okay? You know you're gonna bring all them people up. Out, out, all them Holocaust people. He's gonna bring them people up out the grave, okay? And they're gonna be in the millennial on the uh, and reign. That's why you're gonna have uh another uh uh, time where the enemy is coming because all them people who was killed for Christ in those uh, Holocaust things and just because they are Jews, God going to bring them all up. I mean, that's what I think. That's what I think. Okay. I'm over here talking again, but please, <laughs> this is what I think. If he can save us from roots of, of heathen roots, pagan roots, he surely can save his own people 
Thank you, Jesus, who he came through their line and lineage, okay? So let's go into um, a quick prayer. Father, we thank you for this word. Open our ears and our hearts to receive it in Jesus' name. Psalms 102, the prayer of the afflicted, when he when is overwhelmed and poured out his complaint before the Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let your let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Okay. Now it doesn't say who wrote this, whether it was David or whoever. Okay. Uh, for my days are consumed like smoke and my bones are burned as a heath or hearth. My heart is smitten within like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groanings, my bones cleave to my skin. Thank you, Jesus. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and I, I, I am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. My enemies reproach me all the day. That's what you said. People, they just, I don't like Israel. Why? Well, they got diamonds and they got this, they got that. They, and then they, they cheap, they, all kinds of things. Okay. They that are mad against me are sworn against me. They are swearing. We're going to eliminate these people. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine in because of thine indignation thy wrath for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down this is the children of god he said thou has in have had indignation which we know from the torah god told them if the, the blessings and the curses are coming if you don't do this and i'm going to do that god put his word out on them Okay, and he says clearly, thine indignation and the and thy wrath, for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth. I am withered like grass. This has got to be Israel. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generation. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Thank you, Jesus, for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. The set time to favor Zion. Thank you, Jesus, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones. Favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Favor Zion, so that the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, Bakoshi, he shall appear in his glory. Hallelujah. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people, thank you, Jesus, which shall be created, shall praise. Remember, he said, I create these people for me. God is creating a new thing, a new people, a born again people, born of the water and of the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And the first sheaf was Christ. The book of Leviticus talking about the offerings. The first offering is a sheaf. And then the two loaves, my God, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the two loaves consisting of Gentiles and Jews. These are Baco. This is the new creation. Thank you, Jesus. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Tabashata. We were created to praise the Lord, to magnify the Lord, to exalt the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From the heavens did the Lord behold this earth. Didn't I tell you the Lord is looking at the earth? To hear the groanings, 
the groaning of the prisoners to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion. Thank you. His praise in Jerusalem. Baba Koshe. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakens my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of thy hand. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure forever. All of them shall wax old like a garment as a vessel. Thank you. As a vesture shall thou change them and they shall be changed. Remember we said when they rise, God going to decide what you look like or who, what you are when you rise. He says here. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment, and as a vesture shall thou change them, and they shall be changed. You don't know what you're going to be when you rise, okay? Because we say when we arise who are in Christ, it does not appear what we shall be. But when Christ rises, when we, when we arise with, uh, in Christ, then we're going to see him as he is. Because I told you the other day on the tape, only God knows what you're going to rise up to be. Okay? We talk, you've been acting like a snake. You may come up and be looking like a snake. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I believe that God is due. See, we are trying to figure out things, but God has already written a lot of stuff in this, we, I mean, you could just, I mean, just getting down and just uh, 24 hours a day, just studying, just seeing what, what does says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Zechariah, the 10th chapter is what I wanted to go to. Thank you, Jesus. And the 10th chapter of Zechariah, which we, I told you we we're going to study Zechariah, but the 10th chapter, it says the, the future strengthening of Judah and Ephraim. Remember I told you, Judah and Ephraim. And because Judah, first Ephraim went off into idolatry, the, t the northern ten tribes. And Judah down in, was in Jerusalem. And then Judah would end up sinning too. And God said, because for his name said, he going to keep, he, he became. And in the end, he going to bring Judah, the two sticks, back together and put them together. He going to put Judah and Ephraim back together. But the 10th chapter says, Ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter reign so that the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity and the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams they comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. So they went off into idolatry, Ephraim and Judah. And the diviners told them lies. They, instead of keeping them to understand what the book of back there said in Deuteronomy, the blessings and the curses. And if you uh, uh, forsake God, as Solomon's um, father David told him, God will be against you because he put before you life and death. Choose life. He put before you blessings and curses. But he said the diviners uh, have seen a lie. They have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. They've been comforting Israel all this time. God is still with you. Don't worry. It's been a time and you haven't had the sacrifices. And But God is here. And God, but God, for the 400 years after the kingdom was rent from Solomon, God was silent. And then John the Baptist came because they were still the Pharisee, Pharisee, Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes were still carrying on. But God was not present. Okay. When John the Baptist came, he told them, repent. Let's start off with correct. Now y'all need to repent. They were like, repent from what? We ain't doing nothing. <laughs> yes, you're forgetting the weight of your matters. Judgment, mercy, and faith. You forgetting the way of your matter, going all the way back to the Torah. You know, being mindful of the way of your matters. You're forgetting that part. Okay? Jesus was just talking to the Pharisees and the uh, scribes 
and he was just talking to them, okay? That's the tape, tape before. Uh, but they have seen a vain, uh, and the viners have seen a, a lie and told false dream. They comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. This flock just went on off into, and then when Jesus came, he came unto his own. Your king was prophesied riding on an ass, coming in, and oh, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. But then what did the religious leaders say? We need to get rid of this man. He's here. He is over here healing on the Sabbath day. Okay. And breaking the laws of Moses. Well, Moses got the laws from God, didn't he? Didn't God give Moses the law? And now can't God come and let you know which he did in Christ say, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. And what is the Sabbath day for? What is the purpose of the Sabbath day? To cease from your own labor. Okay. And, and the Sabbath day is really the day of the Lord. And who is the Lord? Jesus is the Lord. It's the day of the Lord. And what did the Lord do on that day? He healed. He delivered. He restored. He replenished. Thank you. He gives us rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thanks for the Lord do. And it says, because there was no shepherd, my anger was kindled against the shepherds. And I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts has visited his flock, the house of Judah, and has made them as his goodly horses in the battle. He made Judah like his goodly horses in the battle. He will change what they're going to do. Out of him came forth the corner. Out of Judah came forth the corner. Out of him the nail. Out of him the battle bow. Out of him every oppressor together. And this is what it says. The term is, I'm going to read what Scopio wrote. Okay. And it's talking about uh, the, the corner, the nail, and out of him, the battle bow. Okay, so that's what we want to deal with. Okay, and it says here, the tense is future. From him, Judah, shall be the cornerstone, Exodus 17. Okay, and First Peter. From him, the nail, Isaiah 22, second chapter, verse 23 and 24. From him, the battle bow. Uh, the whole scene is of the events which group about the deliverance of the Jews in Palestine in the time of the northern invasion under the beast in Daniel, the seventh chapter. OK, the final deliverance is in which with the whole, the final deliverance is wholly affected by the return of the Lord in Revelation 19. So the final deliverance. So when you talk about Christ is the cornerstone, he is the nail. And I'm going to come read, read a little bit before we finish Zechariah. Then I tell you, there's a lot in here because we could just get our pay, uh, stop cooking and have uh, the food delivered and just stay here in the Bible. <laughs> no more getting up and cooking. Just just stay right here until we get all that God get get it all that God has for us. Well, we're going to talk about the nail, and that's um, brought to us in Ezra. Ezra is talking about the nail. In fact, Israel said, "Leave us a nail." Just leave us something, Lord. When you building your house, leave us something. And they said, just leave us a nail. Either leave us, uh, 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 just give us, I'm going to try to get to this scripture, y'all. Okay. And this is talking about um, Ezra, the ninth chapter. Which I could just use my phone and find Ezra. Listen, this is to encourage you as Bible students, those who are students of the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. To, I, I'm trying to find Ezra. This is this um. This comes. This this little uh physical attack is coming. Try to discourage me for what I'm doing, but I'm not discouraged because I know who I I'm serving. It's not like I'm. You go to school and you go to school and you take a class and it's like superficial. I just want to pass the class. I just want to pass the class so I can get my degree and tell everybody I got a degree. You know, my son who was in medical school, he said, medical school is not like that, mom. You can't just pass to get the paper. You got to actually know. <laughs> you got to actually know the parts of the body. You got to actually know the information. It's not just getting it so you can get a certificate. Because many people got a certificate in various things and they don't remember anything that they remember. They don't remember anything. Okay, and this is the Bible. The Bible is not just so you can get a degree. You got to re remember. You got to you got to put it to heart, 
and it got to be inside you. And I'm up here looking at Ezra. You see, I'm struggling with this, but I'm going to tell you, I hope y'all be patient with me because um, it's uh, Ezra. Yeah, we are at the Chronicles. Um, the reason that I want you to be patient with me because we are going to be going through and I need everybody on board praying for me and I'm praying for you because as long as you purpose to move into spiritual things, you're going to have physical attacks. Your body is under attack. The serpent is going to bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. Now, you know we are the heel because we're still on the earth, okay? The head, which is Jesus, can't get to the head, okay? He can't get to those things who's gone already. He got to get to the heel, and the heel is the foot. So we're still on the earth. So since we're still on the earth, the enemy will come and bruise Said bruise. You can't destroy. He just bruise you. So these are just lightly light afflictions, as Paul said, light afflictions. Thank you, Jesus. So we in Ezra the ninth chapter. I found Ezra. And sometimes, uh, like the other week, I had just congestion. They gave me all this stuff. I said to myself, you know what? I can't wait for my glorified body. It's coming. Ezra the ninth chapter, verse eight. And now for a little space, grace has been shown. From the Lord our God to leave us a remnant, which Paul, the apostle Paul, talked about the remnant. We read that in Peter this morning. I think it was Peter talking about the, it was, no, it was in Romans. Romans, the um, ninth chapter, and Romans, the 11th chapter, uh, the apostle Paul said God had left a remnant. And we see here in the book of Ezra, this is a, a prayer and confession of Ezra. Let's go back up to. Ezra the ninth chapter, beginning at the fifth verse and come down. And at the evening sacrifice, I arose up from my heaviness. And having rent my garments and my mantle, I fell on my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God. Now this morning we read David's prayer for Israel. And I said, this is what Ezra said, Oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee. My God. For our iniquities are increased over our head. These are people who are praying for Israel. David prays for Israel. Ezra is praying for Israel, okay? And our trans trespasses is grown up unto the is grown, grown up unto the heavens. Our trespasses has reached all the way up to heaven. Okay? It says, Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass unto this day. For our iniquities have we, our kings, our priests, uh, been delivered unto the hands of the kings of the land, and to the sword, and to captivity, and to the spoil, and to the confusion of faith, which Daniel said, confusion of faith belonged to us, God, because Daniel was now one of the young men taken to Babylon. Okay, as it is this day, and now for a little space, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. Thank you, Jesus. To give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. All the way back there, Ezra is praying. David is praying. Daniel is praying. Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, the uh, Pharisees himself, is praying for his people. That's why I think song it says, time now for God, her, her time is come to favor her. Okay? Now, this is, this is the Bible we're reading, y'all. Okay? For we were bondmen, yet... Our God has not forsaken us in our bondage, but has extended mercy. When we told God on justice and mercy, mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia. Now, this is Babylon, the bees and the Persian. Now, God has given them grace. And he's, this is as we're talking about. God has given us grace in the eyes of the king of Persia to give us a reviving to set up the house of the Lord and to repair the desolations thereof and to give us a wall and a nail <laughs> in Judah, in Jerusalem. Okay. 
And now, okay, I'm going to stop there. And now, oh, and now, oh, our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken the commandments which thou hast commanded for thy service, the prophets, saying, The land unto which you go to possess, it is unclean land with filthiness of the people and of the land with the abominations which have filled it with one end to another with their uncleanness. Now, therefore, give not your daughters and your sons unto their daughters and unto their sons, nor seek their peace, nor their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for your inheritance and to your children. So Ezra is citing where the errors are and repairing and repenting for Israel. Okay. This is what's going on. But he just said, we thank you, Lord. You're leaving us a nail and a wall. <laughs> You're leaving us something, God. Thank you, Jesus. And God, you, the, the work for Israel hasn't finished. Pastor Paul said that there's a remnant left. What do you think God going to do with the rest of his people? If he opened up salvation to heathens, Gentiles, you mean to tell me he's not going to open up salvation to his own people? Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let anybody tell you that. They, in fact, he said he going to wash them and cleanse them and one just like that. Thank you. Just like they became a nation again. He going to open them up and they going to, he going to pour repentance. He going to wash them and cleanse them. Okay. Isaiah 22 verses 23 to 25. Okay. Let's go up to Isaiah 22 verse 22. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. Well, this goes, the key of David. Who do you think have the key of the house of David? Okay. Okay. I know Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom, but the keys to the house of David. Revelations 3 and 7. Jesus said, I have the keys of the house of David. <laughs> Revelations 3 and 7. Jesus told us clearly that he had the keys to the house. So that means he's referring to the, the, the stone which the builders rejected has the keys to the house of David. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And see, Israel rejected Christ. They rejected him. But clearly, Isaiah said, you read all of Isaiah, uh, I would drive uh, thee from thy stations and from thy stations state shall be pulled down and it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Elikam, the son of Helkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him and with thy girdle. And so talk about, make it talk about the priesthood. And remember, Jesus clearly told us, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Okay. So when you see here and the key of the house of David, will I lay upon his shoulder, that he shall open and none shall shut and he shall shut and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. Now you're moving now from the spiritual to the natural. He said of his father's house and the offspring and the issues, all vessels of small quantity, from the vessels of cup, even to all the vessels of flagon. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed and be cut down. Now, wasn't Christ removed and cut down? Okay. And the burden that was upon it shall be cut off for the Lord has spoken. Because he's not putting it upon this man. He's going to put it upon Christ who ends up with the truth, the real key the real key, which is Revelation, the third chapter, verse 7. And this is what the Lord says. He has the key, okay? And the angel of the church of Philadelphia, these things said he that is holy, he that is true, and he that hath the key of David. He that opened and no man shutteth, shutteth and no man opened. Let's talk about Jesus, okay? So this going back over here to Isaiah, which one I put that over there? Isaiah, the 22nd chapter, verse, verse 22, okay? And it says, the nail, he, so God is talking about leaving them a nail of fastening them, okay? Now we're going back to Zechariah. We're still in the 10th chapter of Zechariah, okay? 
and we were down to uh, my angle. I'm going to go back up. It says, um, they were troubled. Okay, let's go back. It says, the latter rain, and so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers and rain to every one grass. I'm going to skip down. And they shall be as mighty men which tread their enemies in the mire and in the street in the battle. Okay, because Christ is now the one out of Judah has made them as his goodly horses in the battle. So this is talking about Christ way back in the book of Isaiah and Ezra is talking about this, the, the, the uh, line of David, the, the key to the house of David, which we know Christ comes through the lynches of David. Okay, even now they're looking for someone who is traced back to David. Okay, well, Jesus was clearly, Matthew would tell you, he was clearly straight back to David. And even though you talk about giving that a power and authority, we see here in this book of uh, Zechariah 10, we're still back there. I wanted to uh, home in. Out of him came forth the corner, and out of him the nail of, of him, the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men which tread their Enemies in the mire and in the streets and in the battle, they shall fight because the Lord is with them. That made me think when you go to Isaiah, God is going to fight with them. Thank you, Jesus. Like the prophet Elijah said to Elijah, Lord, open his eyes so he can see. See, a lot of time people think God just going to let them, they are representing God and, and they got all the equipment and they got the guns and things, but God is going to be there too. Because he says, the angels of the Lord, all in the Old Testament, where the angels of God was with his sword drawn. Joshua saw him standing there with his sword drawn. And shot. Joshua said, are you for us or are you for them? And he said, neither one. I'm, I'm the, uh, 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 um, the, the, the captain of the Lord's army. So in other words, I'm here to do the work of God. I ain't for you or him. I'm here to do what God called me to, uh, sent me to do. Okay. And Isaiah, because we're just reading uh, here about... Um, uh, they're coming for they, I will gather the house of Judah and it shall save the house of Joseph and I will save the house of jo Joseph and I will bring them again to the, to place them for I have mercy on them and they shall be as though I had not cast them off okay this is what God is doing but we're going to read Isaiah 62 verses 1 we're going to start which you know this scripture already the Spirit of the Lord is upon me <laughs> because he anointed me uh, to preach the good news and, and, and tidings unto the meek. And he has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Christ stopped there when he was in his first advent. And the day of vengeance of our God. says a day of vengeance coming and to comfort all that mourn. So that after the day of vengeance, there's going to be a time of comfort, okay? And who are you going to comfort? All them people he's going to raise up. <laughs> yeah, them people who are going to be killed and he's going to comfort them. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty of ashes and all of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, Okay? And they shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the former desolation. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. The strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. So when is all this going to happen? In the millennial reign. Ye, but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Okay? For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be upon them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery. For burnt offerings, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. 
and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offsprings among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in, in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me in the garment of salvation. He has uh, covered me with the robe of righteousness and as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Okay? And it says here, Psalm, I mean, uh, Isaiah 62, for Zion's sake, for Zion. You saw over here, Zion was just saying, Lord, just leave us a nail, leave us something. Okay. For Zion's sake, will I hold, while I not hold my peace, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest till the righteous thereof go, righteousness go, thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentile, Gentile shall see thy righteousness. And all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Which that goes to Revelation 2. It says it's going to give Christ, Revelations 2, 2nd chapter verse 17, 3rd chapter verse 12, talking about a new name. His people are going to get a new name. Jesus is going to have a good name, a new name. And everybody who, you're going to give, and anybody going to know, but you and God. Okay. Thou shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shall no more be deemed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be deemed desolate. But thou shall be called Helzebah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Okay, and we can go on down the and then it goes to I set watchmen upon you who will not give me rest until he makes Jerusalem um, a praise in the earth. Okay. So I think y'all dismissing Israel and all these people coming is already written what's going to be the end of all these people. The way which Israel is going to get a second chance is called Jacob's trouble, but he will open her up as a nation because many Israelites, Jews, are a part of the body of Christ. They already accept Jesus. But as a nation, she's going to get a chance. Because it says on the uh, third day, he will come back and recover. He will give her a chance again. And they're going to see her. And through all that, during Revelation 14 and 1, talk about he's going to be presenting himself as a, as a lamb on Mount Zion. They're going to see him. So just remember, the time to favor her is come. The time to favor Zion has come. Okay? You read all of this scripture. Okay? Uh, that's uh, uh, Zechariah, the 11th chapter, going all the way down. Okay? All, all the way um, down to verse 7. The 11th chapter, 1 through 7. Okay? I'm encouraging you. And the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people have a, a lot of comments to make about it different race of people, you know, they got a different, this person and that person, and, and they don't like it, and this, this person's stupid, that person, listen, all of us need salvation, every single one, and do not think that God is not going to save Israel, and Paul said, all of Israel shall be saved, because I really do believe that God going to raise up all the people from the Holocaust, I really do, he going to raise them all, don't know babies is burned up and stuff, and for what, because they had the star of, uh, uh, on them? Now, you know, I don't believe, uh -uh, uh -uh. if God can save you and me, and you come from a heathen background, he's surely going to save them when they got killed just for his, for knowing him. Okay, salvation is coming to Israel too. So please pray for Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and pray for the, the children of es um, uh, Ishmael and Isaac children. Because that's how this issue is coming, Ishmael children. And Isaac children. Ishmael is from the handmaiden and became a prince too. And this, but they all everybody, every God said he but everybody got to be saved and come through Jesus Christ. Everybody, I don't care who you are. 
I don't care what race, what language, what color, how you know how fancy you look, whatever. You got to have to come to Jesus Christ. There's only one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. And so, <laughs> I thank you for your patience. And this lesson is serious, especially in this season of time, because there's gonna be some things coming where He says gonna make Israel a threshing wheel, where she can thresh them. Okay, there's a scripture about he's making her a threshing wheel. So when the nations begin to say, we are going to just come up against her, that's in the scripture too. How they're going to just come in and, and do all this stuff. But God has given uh, his word concerning Israel. And remember, God's word, like he told me, he said, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, and my counsel shall stand. So God's counsel shall stand. Just thank God that you save and I'm saved. <laughs> And I'm praying for my children to be saved. I'm praying, I'm believing by faith they are saved. I believe in, I'm like Hannah. I'm praying, Lord, they're saved. Well, and whatever he has to do to get, put them on the potter's wheel and make them over again and shape them more, whatever you got to do, like you do with me and like you do with everybody that is saved, that God has to transform us. You know, we got saved and we think there was no more work to be done. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was a lot more work to be done because we got to get rid of the old nature and put on Christ. So please continue to pray for Israel. We pray for the Palestinians. We pray for the Israelis. We pray for souls to be saved. We pray that souls will come into the light of the gospel of Christ. Of course, God is the only one. He's the only Savior. And he has sent his son to be the lamb to take away the sin of the world. And it says it the other day in, in um, the scriptures, many he covered uh, 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 the sins of many. Not all because you have to accept him for your sins to be forgiven. We pray that this is encouraging you, but mainly this season and time when you see things happen, get into the scriptures and search and see what is happening in the world, what should be your position, okay? And let the word be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path, okay? In Jesus' name. Father, we thank and praise you. I pray. And thank you for this word that it will fall on good ground, take root in our lives, that we might feast on the word and that we might stay in the straight and the narrow. Thank you. Walking in the light of your word. We pray that our hearts will not be overtaken with the cares of this life. We pray for our families. We pray for our communities. We pray for our cities. We pray for our congregation. We pray for those that we come in contact with. That your will, your way, and your word will be done in us and through us. We thank you for your precious blood that was shed on Calvary Cross, Lord God. Thank and praise you. Because you live, we shall live also. For our faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We dare not trust a sweeter frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it down. Amen. Amen. So, for those who saw my earlier video. We was just getting up, okay. I think it was probably about 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but I wanted to get in there and pray for Israel. And I wanted to get in there and to encourage people to see that God is going to not forsake her. It's not going to just be with uh, weapons of, of the enemy. God going to send his angels. He's going to send those to help him. And, and you're going to see some, some, some it's going to be some miraculous stuff that's going on, okay. But the main thing for us as people is to pray much one for another. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Push the like button and encourage someone else to come along and stay in the word and stay in your word and be careful that all these comments are making about any race of people. We don't know who God is going to say. All we got to do is say, Lord, what is your will for me? Set a watch before my mouth that I send up with my tongue. Help me, Lord. And pray for the body of Christ. Because the rapture is coming, and I really don't want to be left, y'all. I really don't. It's going to be some time on this earth, but I pray. Okay, please continue to pray, and um, and pray for everybody, all right? Push the like button and encourage somebody to come on. And thank God for all those new ones who have logged on. I pray that this is encouraging you. If you don't have your Bible, and get your uh, notepad, and just get ready to start uh, getting in the Word and, and digging deep, okay? And searching the scriptures. That's what it says. Searching the scriptures. John 5 and 39. I think it's the scripture. That's the one that I'll be citing this. Because it said, In them you think you have taken eternal life, but they are they which do testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? They attest this. It says, and another one, it says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So the God is coming. He is the one 
that we are, are following. My scripture coming from, from this town, 5 to 39, John the 5th chapter, verse 39. And then I put down two. I wanted to say is in Hebrews 10 and 7. These are like the foundations, things that make that, that motivated me to move forward. And it says, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. This is Christ speaking. Then he, I did 2 Timothy 2, 15, study to show thyself approval to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you have to study so you can rightly divide. And that means just not just reading, but running references and getting uh, uh, concordances and, and breaking down words and understand. All of that is studying. Studying is not the same thing as reading. You know, study means you got to put a little more time in, okay? And then it says in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, which means teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We want to do good works, so we need to be properly furnished that means we have to study. And, and and you can see, and I've been studying a long time. I still need some. I still am not ready for my promotion, y'all. I'm still maybe back in the first grade. So please continue. I pray that you encourage it and you feel lifted up when you're in the word, that you are motivated to, 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 to do more. When you find there's a little tug to try to get in the word, resist it. That's the enemy, okay? He's trying to keep you from having the words of eternal life. And that is the word of God. And of course, there'll be a lot of things as mother and wives and jobs. They're trying to do what I should do on my job. My lunchtime, I would have my Bible out. And my people on my job, I'm going to tell you, because I got saved and um, I was working in Dykeman Welfare Center and the um, social services part of it. And as a receptionist, and then I began to work with one of the managers. And, um, and so they saw me, my transition. Because I didn't have any dresses. I just had tight pants and, you know, and uh, everybody trying to take you to lunch and all kind of stuff. And they saw what I got saved. And some of them actually, um, I think because they, they was like, okay, she really is changed. Cause, and one particular one, um, Gwendolyn, her daughter got very sick. And she was saying, you know, do you think, because I was just telling everybody, God is real, and, and, and God is healing, and God is just, I was just, I was just going, to, I mean, I was just saved. And she came, and she got saved, her husband got saved, and her house got saved. Because God took me from the midst of them, from being uh, in my early 20s. You know when you're in your early 20s, and you got on uh, hip hugger pants and stuff. <laughs> You was just doing your thing, but they saw me get saved, and so they some people came, and there's more than one person came because of my conversion, and that's what it's all about. This your life would affect somebody else, you know. And so, I pray that you continue on. Now, I won't say that I'm gonna always be dressed up, y'all, please, because all I'm gonna do is get up here and talk to y'all like you're one of my uh, family members. <laughs> say y'all are part of my family. You ain't gonna always get dressed up for your family, do you? But you know, when I first came up in the um, early years, late 50s and early 60s, you did have to get dressed up to go eat. You had to go take a clean up because the kids was outside. So you had to clean up and get ready to come and the table was set and everybody had to wash up and come to the table. But now everybody got their paper and their food and the TV and, the, and everything and the people were kind of scattered. But anyway, I'm rambling again. But please, 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 please stay in your Bible. I just thank God... Um, there's a few times I had a chance to, to be with people who were really interested in their scriptures. And I was just so happy to find that somebody else was interested in studying the Bible. Just studying the Bible like I was. And so it, that really blessed my heart. The few people that I had a chance to sit in class with and talk and talk about the word. Because what else are we going to When you leave here, you want to leave here full <laughs> of the Holy Ghost and full of the word of God. You want to be full of it. Okay, and so we pray that this has been in, um, motivating you to get into the Bible and let the Bible get into you. Continue to pray as I continue to um, pray for you. Please pray for me and my household. And um, and uh, within these bodies, eventually, I'm feeling a little bit better. That a heating pad was helping, but they don't know what it is. But I'm not even worried about it because I've come this, I've come this Far by faith.
Hallelujah. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. That's why I said, oh, 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 oh. Can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Yes, we come this far. Far by faith. That's the song in the Bible Church of Christ. They said, March in. Leaning on the Lord. Every time they were singing, I would be crying. That was only in my 20s because that was just so. My, I mean, God just smothered me in love and I could just feel his presence. Because whenever you get to the point where you want to take your own life and your mother and father that gave you away, you need somebody to love you. you you need somebody to hug you and say, I love you, I love you. And God was doing that to me all the time. So when they were saying, trusting in his holy word, that's why I think it made me go to start getting, he never failed me yet. That's why I said, oh, 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 can't turn around. We come this far by faith. Yes, we come. This fall by faith every day. We're leaning on the Lord. And then sometimes the choir we go, we lean on. Yeah, church, we had a good time in church. I mean, we had a church and the Spirit of God was just moving. The choir would be marching in. I mean, we had real church. We had real church. And the, uh, they, it just was real church. And then we had dinner between services. And we just was one wholesome environment. And it's that, and it stayed in me. It stayed in me, and so uh, I'm gonna take it, take them thoughts with me all the way home until I get home to the real church. Every now and then, I have a, a, a dream that I'm in one of those sanctuaries where the saints is just thousands of saints, and and they're all robed, and and it, the whole congregation is together. Thank you, Jesus. And they probably, and singing. And in fact, the revelation said they're singing a song. Well, a song that the angels can't, they're going to be some singing in heaven and they're going to be rejoicing. I know y'all just can't wait to get there. But we got work to do here, so we're going to keep on working until Jesus calls us home. Please push the like button and encourage somebody else to get their Bible and get their head off of that TikTok and stuff and all that stuff on TV. Get your head into the word sometime, more than one time a week. Because most people go to church and you, you ain't getting that much Bible. You ain't getting that much word. You, you need to, you, 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 anyway, let me stop. Please pray for me. <laughs> I'm praying for you, okay? God loves you. I love you. And be blessed. And I know this is going to be a blessing. You get in your Bible. Just, just give me a little thing. I'm in my Bible. I'm in my Bible. I'm studying. Read all of Zechariah and run the references to it. Okay? And it's going to take it. Just take, um, if you're studying the, the Israel, like now, Zechariah gives you a little. And, and it's, it's not that long a book, but if you do all the references, it might take you a good while. You know, it's only 14 chapters to it. But it, it's going to take you a while to go through it. Okay? And it covers a whole lot of stuff. All right? Please be be uh, encouraged if you're going through anything. God is going to be there. He's begun this work in you. He will continue to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Let us close our Father, we thank and praise you for all that you allow us to share in your word. We pray that this word will fall on good ground into the hearts and minds of your men and women and those who are seeking, those who are questioning, those who are wondering. The, about the way, the truth, and the life. We pray that you will speak to each one individually, Lord God, and let them know that you are real. You are a real and true and living God and that you love us so much. You sent your word. Your word became flesh and dwelt among us. We thank and praise that you have a plan for them, uh, uh, for the prosper them to prosper, uh, to do them, um, to bless them. Jeremiah said, I know my thoughts concerning you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Let them know that you have a plan for their life and that you love them so that your arms are outstretched toward them. Whatever they may be experiencing in this life, Lord God, that you have a better plan for them. We pray that they will hear you and receive you into their hearts. We ask you to continue to show yourself to each and every one of us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And count it done. Amen. Amen. So, y'all come pray for me. Just tell you, I'm just a regular person, okay? 
And uh, I, I'll tell you throughout this, uh, I'll tell you how many videos I got over here. And um, and all the videos I've ever done have not been over here because I, I have videos on CDs, which I don't know if they're ever going to come off. The one I did about um, Out of the Belly of Hell cried out, I used Jonah because that's one of the first sermons that the Lord gave me. Out of the belly of hell cried out because I felt that I had gone through a hellish in uh, time. And when I got that scripture and read that, the Lord moved on me to bring that sermon. Out of the belly of hell cried out and God heard me. And so there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, scriptures. I haven't done any preaching lately, but uh, <laughs> this is the teaching part. Okay, so I pray that y'all are receiving this teaching. There is, I'll tell you how many videos I have. And I pray that you are, are going to uh, take this word. Let's see my channel. 790 videos. So don't ask me how I'm going to get back to all of them. I'll say, well, because I haven't saved them either. But I may try to see if my son can put them on some kind of a um, little thing. And 790 videos. So there's plenty there to start. If you just go back and look at one each time. And then if you start doing it from the study, you get your book, your dictionary, and you get your pads. And take time out because this is food for your soul. Here and your soul shall live. Your soul shall live. You don't want to have a little puny soul and the rest of you is big and plump. You want to have a soul that's nourished and made fat on the word of God. This is what this channel is for, okay? Push the like button and continue to come along. Encourage somebody else to who needs to have. It's like a free Bible. You just said just say it's like a Bible school. Just say it's like Bible school because I've had the opportunity to teach in a couple of Bible schools. You know, people have gone and got their degrees in in, in from the teaching. And not because of me, because of just sharing what God has given me. And I pray that you are motivated. Don't let uh, uh depend on somebody else to feed your soul. You you can do this yourself. You can do this, you can read. It take time. I've said, I'm going to start off with a little bit of time aside. I'm going to get my Bible. And I'm telling you, you can start with Zechariah. Or if you're just brand, brand, brand new, then start with um, uh, the Gospels, okay? And then run references because those Gospels are going to refer you back to the Old Testament too, okay? In the to Old Testament, and you want to, you can do Daniel. If you're talking about eschatology, things that's going to happen in the last days, it would tie you to Revelation. And it would, all the scriptures, if you run reference, get a good reference Bible. I got a scope for your reference Bible, which I got a whole bunch of different kinds of Bibles. Which when you teach, you, you're going to hear, see what other people are saying. But then you start running your references. And, and then remember, your real, real teacher is the Holy Spirit. The Bible said he will lead and guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is really the teacher. So that's when you sit down and say, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me in this Bible. And he will. You see, and I'm asking you in Jesus' name that you help me get understanding in your word. Don't let it be strange to me. Let, give me a desire for your word. Talk to God. He's right there, okay? I pray that you be encouraged and continue on in Jesus' name. I'm saying goodbye this time. Bye-bye.